Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about another new Terra Master. I know I talk about Terra Master on this channel ooh, about once a month, uh, probably a little bit more than usual currently because they're bringing out a lot of their new hardware to market and today I want to talk about a brand new Thunderbolt Raid Daz. I want to talk about their new two bay, not this one. I've got this one on the table because it uses exactly the same chassis. This one here is the T. D2. We've already talked about the channel before. We've done performance benchmarks and speed tests over Thunderbolt. The unit I want to talk about today, because this is only here for guidance, is the Thunderbolt, uh, the TD2 Thunderbolt 3 Plus. It is their 7-in-1 docking station and combined DAS. What that means is this is utilizing exactly the same architecture as this, near enough identical front and back. It allows you to connect a two bay hardware RAID DAS to your PC or Mac system and then via that connected device not only have access to two hard drives in a RAID 0 combined or a RAID 1 mirrored and that goes for SSDs as well but on top of that you've also got a multitude of other docking ports on the rear of the device that allow you to create an expanded kind of hardware environment so like other docking stations there is support of a number of different ports and connections on the rear of the brand new um, td2 plus that we should talk about first and foremost there's usb 3 and again it is usb 3.1 gem 1 so a couple of ports at five gigabits per second each but again remember everything i'm going to talk about is funneled through this device via a single Thunderbolt cable to your PC or Mac system, like any docking station. This docking station just happens to have two 3.5 inch bays of storage built in as well, with all of these ports being able to be utilized in a single Thunderbolt connection. So after the two USB 3 ports, there is a display port, display port 1.4. So again, you can connect some quite high end monitors to that, and particularly you Mac users will be more than familiar with that. Now the two SATA drives there at the front, they take advantage of the very latest SATA drive, so you can go all the way up to 16 TB with the likes of the Seagate iWolf series of drives for NAS, or you can go even a little bigger if you want to look at some of those data center class 18 TB drives, but I won't worry too much about those. Uh, on top of that, the drive or the device also has a LAN port on the rear, but it's not a NAS. So let's get that right out of the way. The um, one GBE RJ45 LAN on the rear is to allow your connected PC or Mac portable device over Thunderbolt to access the internet. So you've got the internet or the network there, you've got a LAN cable connected to the rear of the docking station, and then this connects to Thunderbolt to you. It doesn't make the drive internet accessible, it doesn't turn it into a NAS or anything like that. Now, there's two Thunderbolt 3 ports as well, and those Thunderbolt 3 ports, again, can be utilized not only to connect this device to your host PC or Mac, but they also allow daisy chaining of other Thunderbolt devices, as well as charging of devices up, uh, with a 60 watt charge being made available. What's really cool is you can connect certain supported USB Type-C mobile phones, and I think there's some of the, um, uh, the, the new galaxies are there as well. There's a few, there's mostly Android phones. I didn't see any iPhone supported currently. But if you're using a device with a USB Type C connector and it's on the compatibility list, you can connect your mobile phone to this device and then project over the display port. That's right, you can turn your small screen into the big screen, which is going to be really handy for those of you out there that like to have that flexibility and are going to be doing presentations or just want to recreate that workflow with recordings they've made on a high-end phone and want to be able to view them on a visual interface before transferring them over to the hard drives. Now, that uh, the system itself does arrive with all of those ports all on this single chassis. It's retailing for about 280 give or take, which is only about 20 or 30 quid more than the standard RAID version that we're looking at today. And again, much like this device, it has got a hardware RAID switch built onto the base of the device. Let's do that somewhere where the light doesn't go crazy. And that light, that switch there at the bottom corner allows you to set the RAID configuration of your hard drive. So you don't have to muck around with software. And although that switch is a little bit rudimentary, it's still pretty handy to be able to just set your RAID, turn the device on, and have two drives that can be used for your Apple Time Machine backups, or just localized storage, but at the same time, have your laptop on the go, go on a shoot, come back, pop it on the table, open it up, connect it to your dock, and then that dock will allow you to have 
the network connection, allow you to have the display port connection, allow you to have the USB type C connection of connected charging and display devices, and a couple of USB 3 devices too. So again, it is a very interesting development from them because there's only ever been two or three, to my knowledge, docking stations that have got an internal hard drive built in that support network connectivity, USB connectivity, display port connectivity, and still maintained daisy chaining and supporting charging devices, as well as a hard drive RAID already built in, not JBOD, and your PC or Mac has to do it, all built into the device. So I'm gonna be really interested to see how this pans out for this device moving forward, because TerraMaster are, you know, they were always the budget choice, but I'm seeing more and more of their solutions like their two bay 10 GBE and four bay 10 GBE NAS system that we talked about on the channel very recently really challenging the market and I've always been a fan of TerraMaster anyway as you can see from like a box up there and a unit down there so it will be fun to see when we've got one of these in the studio just how good those speeds are going to be because remember this is still a two bay device that means even if you install SSDs you're not going to get enormous speed you're only going to get five maybe 700 megs with standard SATA SSD, um, SSDs inside and with hard drives you're probably looking somewhere between conservatively 350 to 450 but we'll have to wait and see thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video click like if you did click subscribe to learn more visit the links in the description to span.com and nascompares and i will see you next time